There we go. So, let's take a look at the mono black cards. The first black card we have is Arrogant Outlaw, one of the creatures that we looked at last weekend. Um, for a two and a black, you get a 3-2 Vampire Noble creature. When Arrogant Outlaw enters the battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. So if you're playing Commander, this is a very interesting Commander card, because if you're playing Commander and any opponent loses life this turn, and you cast Vampire or Arrogant Outlaw, then all of your opponents lose two life, and you gain two life. So you can attack one creature, or one, one commander, one player. My brain is all over the place. You can attack one opponent, and then play Arrogant Outlaw, or ha already have Arrogant Outlaw out there. Um, and so doing damage to one person also does damage to your other two opponents, because everyone will then lose two life on top of that. Very good. I wonder if there is a... I want a spooky. I want a spooky station on this. No spooky station. But we will keep it on the beats. The next black card is Bat Whisperer. Very, very cool art on this one. Uh, three and a black for a 4 2 vampire. When Bat Whisperer enters the battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, create a 1 1 black bat creature token with flying. So, you're going to um, create black bats, which is great. Only if an, a, an opponent has lost life, though. So, pair that with the arrogant outlaw, and you've got some, some pretty good stuff going on. You get a free, a free black bat creature. Our next black card is Blade Brand. For one and a black, you get it's an instant. Target creature gains death touch until end of turn and draw a card. This is very fun. I love death touch. My favorite uh, magic mechanic. Um, normally, I play a lot of creatures with death touch, so this doesn't super affect some of my decks, like my uh, Finn the Fang Bear deck. It's not going to affect too much, but... It does mean that I can put creatures without Death Touch into my deck and then give it Death Touch with Blade Brand, and it helps me draw cards. So it's card draw and Death Touch. Uh, it's instant speed, so you can cast it after combat. Uh, attackers and defenders are declared. Um, yeah, it's good. Card draw is always important. The next black card is Blood Pact. Two and a black, instant. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. So you can cast this on yourself if you've got some life to spare for card draw. Uh, you can cast it on an opponent if you really want them to take the two life. If you um, combine this card with uh, other cards like the Arrogant Outlaw or the Bat Whisperer, this card guarantees that an opponent is going to lose two life. So that's pretty good. That will that will trigger your arrogant outlaw and the um, lose two gain two. It will also trigger the bat whisperer to create a bat bat token. The next black card is bloodline culling. For one, a black and a black, you get an instant, and you get to choose one. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn, or all creature tokens get minus two, minus two until end of turn. So you can make one powerful creature less powerful for the rest of the turn, or you can make a slew of creatures less powerful until the end of the turn. If, say for instance, you're playing against white here, there's a lot of cards in this white set that create 1-1 one, one human knights, or 1-1 one, one human creature tokens. If you play Bloodline Culling, 
and your opponent has a bunch of 1-1 one, one human creature tokens, this is going to kill all of them. Because it's minus 2, minus 2 on all creature tokens. So including yourself, so you might want to keep in mind how many creature tokens you might lose. But it is very, very good if you're playing against that white deck that we were talking about earlier because it's going to kill all of their human tokens. Potentially. There's a couple of uh, cards that buff humans, so there might, their tokens might not be 1-1s one by the time you cast this spell, but if they are, you can wipe the board um, of all of their tokens and kind of reset, reset the pace a bit, which is very important. Ah, the next card is Blood Teeth Collector. Blood Tithe? Blood Teeth. For four and a black, you get a three, four vampire noble. So black is leaning very heavily into vampires, this set, so vampires and zombies. And it's going to set things up for the next set, which is um, Crimson Vow in November. That's going to have a bunch of vampires in it. So these two sets in combination, there's going to be a lot of vamps in black. So this Blood Teeth Collector, Vampire Noble, is a three, four with flying. When Blood Teeth Collector enters the battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, each opponent discards a card. So you combine this with the Arrogant Outlaw, the Blood Pact, um, and you've got some, some pretty interesting, you can make them, everyone's going to lose two lives, two life, everyone's going to, um, everyone's going to discard a card. Um, it's very good. Very good, I like it. Uh, the next card is Champion of the Perished. This is a card we went over earlier as well. It's one black for a 1-1 one, one zombie creature. With whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Champion of the Perished. So any zombie, any card with zombie in the creature title, you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on Champion of the Perished. So he becomes more buff the more zombies you have. It's pretty great. Uh, the next card is Scrawl from the Cellar. That's some very cool art. Wearing like a suit and he's crawling out of like some barrels. Uh, it's one black for a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. And, oh, put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to one target zombie you control. And it has flashbacks. So you can pay. You can do this again uh, for four mana after the fact. Once this card is in your graveyard, so you can put this one-one counter on um, Champion of the Perished. You can put it on another zombie if you want. The next card is another card we've gone over: uh, Defenestrate, which is a weird English word that means to throw someone from a window. As you can see, this card is throwing someone from a window. For two and a black, you destroy target creature without flying. Because it can't fly, and you've thrown it out of a window, so it's going to die. The next black card is Dire Graph Horde. For four and a black, you get a 3-4 zombie creature. When Dire Graph Horde enters the battlefield, create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens with Decayed. When you do, exile up to two target creature cards from graveyards. Um, so again, a creature with Decayed means it can't block, and then when it does attack, you sacrifice it after combat. Um, and you have to exile up to two target cards from graveyards. So you can target your opponent's graveyard and exile two cards that you'd never want to see again. Um, or you can do it on your own, which is also fine. The next card is Dreadhound, a card I'm going to have to put in my partner's deck because it has a, it's a dog. For four, a black and a black, you get a 6-6 six, six demon dog. When Dreadhound enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Whenever a creature card dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from a library, each opponent loses one life. That is bonkers. Uh, a very powerful dog, very scary looking. 
a 6-6 six, six demon dog. That's just brutal. At least it costs 6 mana, and two of them have to be black, so that's going to... We're going to have to tweak her deck a little bit so that she can get two black mana, I think. The next card is Duress, which is a very standard black card. Um, I don't know why it's in this list. I know it's got new art. So this is new Duress art, which is a very great art. Someone being chained up with mystical chains. So for one black, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. And that player discards that card. So Duress has always been and forever will be the best card to play if you're playing black. Um, if you want to remove spells, especially counters, uh, from your opponent's hand. If you're playing a blue player, playing uh, against someone who's playing mono blue, um, you definitely want to run some Duress cards because then you get to uh, remove some of the counters from their hand and make sure that you can play some spells. It also makes it so that you can look at your opponent's entire hand, which is very useful in a lot of cases. Uh, the next card is Eaten Alive. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that dog. Eaten Alive. For one black, you get a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or pay three and a black. So you either sacrifice a creature or this becomes three and a black black. Exile, target, creature, or planeswalker. So this is very good. Immediately exile, target, creature, and or planeswalker. Um, very hype, very easy, cheap way to get... Um, to get rid of something extremely powerful and, and kind of make it easier for you uh, for the next little while. And you can either sacrifice a creature to pay for it or... Um, a five mana total. Sick. Uh, the next card in mono black is Foul Play. For one and a black. Oh, hold on one second. Turn my fan on. A little warm in here right now. So, for foul play, one and a black sorcery. Destroy target creature with power two or less and investigate. So, you get to kill a low power creature and you get to create a clue token. Which is very good. I like that trade. A clue token is a token that you can pay two mana to sacrifice and draw a card. So you get card draw, and you get to get rid of a power two or less creature. So the next black card is Ghoulish Procession. For one and a black, you get an enchantment. Whenever one or more non-token creatures die, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token with Decayed. This ability only triggers once per turn. So you can't create... Um, you can't create a, an entire army of zombies in one turn, but you can, over time, create a bunch of zombies. The next black card is Gissa, Glorious Resurrector. This is the um, mono-colored commander in... Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Gissa, Glorious Resurrector, costs two, a black, and a black. He's a 4-4 human wizard. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it. So this is very good to keep control of your opponent's graveyard. If you're exiling everything they have, then you're not going to be worried about them recasting things or using their disturb... Um, cast to create a more powerful creature every creature that an opponent controls dies and is exiled instead of going to the graveyard graveyard 
At the beginning of your upkeep, put all creature cards exiled with Gissa onto the battlefield under your control. They gain Decayed. So, at the beginning of your turn, every turn, you can take all of the creature cards that were exiled with Gissa, put them on your battlefield, and use them to attack um, that turn. Once they attack, you have to sacrifice them, um, which means that they sacrifice them, they will go into the graveyard. And because you controlled them, they won't be exiled. So they're exiled for one turn, basically, and then you can use them on your own battlefield to then fight your opponents. Very interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of really neat, neat ways to play with Gissa. The glorious Resurrector. She looks happy that she's doing it. Having a good time. I think mono black players or black combo players are going to have a good time too. The next card is Hobbling Zombie for two and a black. You get a 2-2 two -two zombie creature with Death Touch. When hobble Hobbling Zombie dies, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token with Decade. And that's, that's pretty standard. We've gone over what Decade means a bunch of times. Um, you get a 2-2 two -two creature with Death Touch, and then when it dies, you get another 2-2 two -two creature with Decade. The next card is Infernal Grasp, another card we've gone over in the past. For one and a black, destroy target creature, lose two life. This is really good for the situations where you just need to get rid of something. You have some life to spare. Um, it only costs two mana and two life, and you get to destroy a target creature. So, we get another black uh, legendary creature. The Dar Ghoul Caller of Nefalia. For one and a black, you get a 1-1 one, one human wizard. At the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with Decade, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decade. So Jadar isn't the type of commander or legendary creature that you want to attack with or do anything with. You want to protect them so that at the end of your turn, you create a zombie creature token if you don't have anything that has Decade on it already. So... Um, in combination with Gissa, it's a little bit weak because um, Gissa is going to give you a bunch of creatures with Decayed. But if you use all those creatures to attack and then sacrifice all of them, then at the end of your turn, you're not going to have anything with Decayed. So maybe it is actually a good combination with Jadar. It's very interesting. Um... The next black card is Lord of the Forsaken. This is a mythic rare. For four, a black and a black, you get a 6-6 demon creature with flying and trample. You can pay one black to sacrifice another creature. Target player mills three cards. So as long as you have black mana, you can make someone mill a ton of cards. You can pay one life to add colorless mana to spend this and spend this mana only to cast a spell from your graveyard. So if you're casting a, a creature spell um, from your graveyard, or you're casting any of the spells with flashback from your graveyard, you can pay a life to add colorless to, spend, to cast those spells cheaper. The next card is Mask of Grizzlebrand, which is another legendary card, an artifact, equipment, for one and a black black. Equipped creature has flying and lifelink. Gristlebrand was a notorious black creature card from sets past and is very overpowered, mostly banned, mostly frowned upon. Um, this is Mask of Gristlebrand. Equipped creature has flying and lifelink. Whenever equipped creature dies, you may pay X life where X is its power if you do draw X cards. So instead of the original Gristlebrand card had pay X life to draw X cards or pay 7 life to draw 7 cards or something, something of the sort. And the mask is kind of similar. Um, whenever the equipped creature dies, you can pay life to the amount of its toughness and draw cards to the amount of its toughness. Which is interesting. 
This one I saw on social media the other day, and I thought it was very, very good. The Meat Hook Massacre. It's X and a black black for a legendary enchantment. It's also mythic rare. When Meat Hook Massacre enters the battlefield, each creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. So whatever you paid for it up here. My mouse is not on screen. Whenever you, whatever you paid for it up here, each creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. So again, if you're facing that white um, army of humans, you can pay one mana and a black and a black. Everything on the battlefield gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. And whenever a creature an opponent control dies, you gain one life. So if you kill 10 of their creatures and 10 of your own creatures, then your opponent loses 10 life, you gain 10 life. Very, very cool. Very interesting enchantment. I think this is going to get a lot of play uh, in both Standard and in Commander. The next card is Morbid Opportunist. Opportunist. For two and a black, you get a 1-3 human rogue. I love rogues. Whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So this is a great rogue to have on the battlefield um, early on, and every time a creature dies, you can draw a card. The next card in mono black is more more crut more crut more crut behemoth. For four in a black, you get a seven six zombie giant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or pay one and a black. And this card has menace, which means it can only be blocked uh, by two or more creatures. And it's a 7-6 with menace. That's pretty great. So it's just a big, big boy. Just a big toughie. The next card is Necrosynthesis. For one and a black, you get an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has whenever another creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. So equip it to a, a small creature or a big creature, and it's just going to get buffer over time because no matter how you play magic, creatures die. It also says, whenever enchanted creature dies, look at the top X cards of your library where X is the power, where X is its power. So if you continuously buff up a creature until it hits, becomes a 10-10, when it dies, you get to look at the top 10 cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is the kind of card... Um, this is the kind of card that if you're playing standard, you're probably going to want a full set of this in your deck. If you're playing black, black green, Golgari stuff is going to work really well with this. Even black blue. Um, if you're going to play like a Demir Rogues deck, Necrosynthesis is very intriguing because um, you're going to make your creatures buffer and you get to look and peel off the top of your library when they die. And it's cheap, one and a black. Pardon me. Uh, the next card is No Way Out, two and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards. You create a 2 2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. So, get rid of some of your opponent's cards and create a zombie. Pretty good. For three mana, not too bad. I like this card. The next card is Novice Occultist for one and a black. You get a 1-2 Human Wizard. When Novice Occultist dies, you draw a card and lose a life. So this is a bit um, kind of standard, kind of... Um, Boring, if you will. Um, it's a 1-2 creature that you want to die because you get to draw a card, uh, but you do have to lose a life, so... Kind of an even trade. I would pay a life to draw a card almost any time of day. The next creature, or the next card, is Olivia's Midnight Ambush. For one and a black instant card. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. If it's night, 
that creature gets minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn instead. So, you want it to be nighttime, obviously. Um, and this card, you can pay two mana, one and a black, to pretty much take out anything in the game standard. Unless it's something that's incredibly buff. Um, but base, to base power and toughness, minus 13, minus 13, is going to take care of the majority of the cards in Magic the Gathering. So, this is another card that you're probably going to want a full set of if you're playing standard in black. Because even the minus two, minus two is a pretty good um, removal spell. And then if it's nighttime, it's minus thir 13, minus 13. So some of these cards that get a lot more buff, a lot stronger during the nighttime, you're going to be able to take them out with the Olivia's Midnight Ambush. Very interesting and very powerful. The next card is Rotten Reunion, which is a remake of that farmer's painting. Um, it's one black for an instant exile up to one target card from a graveyard. And you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. You can cast this card again from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. And its flashback cost is one and a black. So this is going to be good. You pay one black mana to create a black zombie creature. Um, and you get to exile something from your opponent's graveyard. Or your own graveyard, but... You probably don't want to do that. The next black card is Siege Zombie. For one and a black, you get a 2-2 two, two zombie creature. Tap three creatures you control. Each opponent loses one life. So that's pretty good. Um, I guess you can do this over and over again. So if you, for some reason, have 30 creatures and tap all of them, each opponent loses 10 life. But chances of that happening are pretty slim. So it's an interesting little 2-2. So far, we've gone through white and blue. And both of them have had a tap three untapped creatures ability card. And none of them have been rather intriguing or impressive. Um, yeah, turning off three creatures in order to take one life away from your opponents. I guess that would be very good if you were partnering this card up with the um, Arrogant Vampire or whatever that card was. Um, arrogant Outlaw, stuff that you need, the Blood Teeth Collector, stuff where you need your opponents to lose life. Um, I suppose that would make this Siege Zombie pretty much worth it if you had three creatures on board. You don't have to attack, you can just tap them and they lose life no matter what. The next black card is Slaughter Specialist. For one and a black, you get a 3 3 Vampire Warrior. He's badass looking. He's got like paintings in the background, he's got this huge axe. That high collar. When Slaughter Specialist enters the battlefield, each opponent creates a 1 1 white human creature token. <laughs> Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 counter on Slaughtered Specialist. So this is kind of a setup and payoff kind of card. And Magic's got a few of these. Um, so when you play Slaughter Specialist, all of your opponents get a 1-1 human creature. And then they're probably going to want to use those creatures as a chump blocker. So as soon as you play Slaughter Specialist and they get a 1-1 human creature, then you go to attack, they're probably going to use that 1-1 one, one human creature to block, to avoid taking damage. And if they do block, they will most likely die, which means you will be able to put a 1-1 one, one counter on Slaughter Specialist. Kind of a, a boss card, because you're just going to keep putting counters on this card, and Slaughter Specialist has the ability to get very, very, very powerful. The next black card is Stromkirk Blood Thief, a vampire rogue. Again, I love me some rogues, so I'm loving this card already. Two and a black for a 2-2 vampire rogue. At the beginning of your end step, if an opponent lost life this turn, put a 1-1 counter on tar target vampire you control. So this is very, very interesting because 
Most people who are playing rogue decks also have a bunch of vampires in here. Um, in general, this is the type of card that would say put a 1-1 counter on Stormkirk Blood Thief at the end of turn, but for some reason they've opened it up and allowed you to put a 1-1 counter on any vampire you control. So you could put it on Slaughter Specialist if you have that card out, and then it becomes buffer and buffer. Um, you can put it on another Vampire Rogue, or you could even put it on Stromkirk Blood Thief. It's very intriguing, very awesome card. Definitely going in my Rogue's deck. That's a very, very cool card. Um, and then we've got Tainted Adversary. Okay, so we've got our, our Adversary for our Black. I'm very excited that Magic is making adversary cards for all the colors, and they all do crazy shit. So this is a one and a black for a 2-3 zombie, Mythic Rare, with Death Touch. Ooh, I like it. So, when Tainted Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay two and a black. So this is more expensive than the other adversary prices. Any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on Tainted Adversary, then create twice that many black zombie creatures with decayed. Oh my god. No way. Okay, that is bonkers. Okay, so let's do some math. If you have, say, three, twelve, let's say you have 14 mana on board. Go to start your turn, right? You have 14 mana on the bat board. You tap two of them. You play Tainted Adversary. When you, play when you play Tainted Adversary, you tap all 12 of your other mana. That is going to put four 1-1 one -one counters on Tainted Adversary. So, Tainted Adversary immediately becomes a 6-7 zombie creature with Death Touch. On top of that, you create eight... Two two black zombie creature tokens. That is, that is a crazy end game card right there. That is absolutely not so. I love it. I love all of these adversary cards so far. So the last card in black is Vant Vampire Interloper for one and a black. You get a two one Vampire Scout with this boss ass cape. Um, it is flying, and Vampire Interloper can't block, so it's just an attack card. That's it. That's all we got for black. There's some really crazy stuff in here. Um, quite a few legendary cards, actually, in comparison to the other mono colors we've gone through so far. Um, I believe there's four, one, two, three, four legendary cards. And all of the other colors we've gone through so far have only had one. So there's some nutso stuff in this black, um, some really great combos, but also some, some just really great single cards. This Dreadhound is really powerful, definitely putting that in my partner's dog deck. Um, stuff like Ghoulis Procession builds your zombie army up over time. Gissa is probably my favorite legendary creature so far because you get to exile and then play creatures from your opponent's um, Library. Uh, yeah, and then obviously the Painted Adversary is very fun and very broken. Uh, could be very broken. People are going to find a way to make this the most powerful thing on the planet. Um, there's a couple of good rogue cards in here for my rogue decks, which I'm always excited about. Um, yeah, so we're just going to take a quick... Quick five minute break.